find a way to come together and enjoy each other, enjoy the word, enjoy the, the assembling. That's what the Bible says. There it is. He says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together because it's in the assembling, not just, it doesn't just make me happy, but when I'm around people, I'm built up and the enemy desires that we isolate ourselves so we're not able to build each other up. So uh, uh, have your social distance. But get in the company of somebody who can encourage you, uh, not bring you down. So you, in this season of your lives, you got to watch the company uh, that you keep. So that the prescription is, again, is to celebrate, number one, to ask God, number two, number three, to leave your worries behind after you give it to God. And number four, uh, watch this, he says this, he says, and to meditate. That's number four, meditate on what's praiseworthy. Meditate on the good report. Meditate on things that are true and lovely. Meditate on these things. In other words, meditate on the word of God. Meditate. Now, if you take the first letter of each of those words, celebrate, ask, leave, and meditate, what word do you come up with? Exactly. You come up with the word calm. And I believe God is saying in this hour that we are in, this crisis that we are in, um, God is saying, hey, y'all, be calm. Be calm or keep calm and carry on. This was a term, uh, a phrase that ha came out of World War II. Um, uh, so God is bringing it back. Uh, a few years ago, it became popular again. And so I believe God is saying, once again, keep calm and carry on keep calm and carry on uh, don't allow this epidemic uh to cause you to lose your mind to cause you to lose your your sanity uh keep calm can i ask you a question uh, can you be calm in the chaos can you be calm in the chaos well, the good news is that, that even if you cannot, and, and if God doesn't remove the chaos as fast as you want him, the good news is that he'll be your calm in the chaos. He'll be your calm in the middle of a storm. As a matter of fact, that reminds me of the story in Matthew 8, where Jesus, I talked about this last week, he was on board the ship, and he was down at the bottom asleep. And before they got on the boat, Jesus had told the disciples, he gave them a word. He says, uh, come on, let's go over to the other side. And uh, see, even in that statement, even in that command, it was a promise. We're going to get to the other side. Now, we might have to go through some things, and I want to encourage you. We might have to go through some things, uh, but we're going to get to the other side. Uh, so, so, so don't worry about it. Um, we're, we're going to get to the other side. We have to take the precautions, yes, but understand we got to go through the storm. We got to go through the waves. We got to go through the thunder, the, the, the lightning. Uh, uh, we got to go through these conditions, but we're going to get to the other side. Why? Because Jesus is on board. And so that's the first thing. If Jesus is on board, why am I worried? He's on board our ship. So we being the people of God should not have to worry about what's going on in, in, in this world. Don't get anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Now, Paul wasn't saying that there wasn't going to be ever be a time where we become anxious. He's saying this don't become, don't dwell in the anxiety. In other words, the, the presence of anxiety is unavoidable. But the prison of anxiety is optional. You have an option right there. Now, we're going to go through moments and situations um, that's going to cause anxiety. But Paul said, don't be a prisoner to it. Don't allow it to, to choke you. Don't allow it to, to trap you and to ensnare you. Uh, uh, when, when these moments and these days come, uh, the Bible talked about in Matthew 8 that the storm came uh, while they were in the middle of the Galilean Sea, that the storm came suddenly. It arose, and that's what this uh, seems like this crisis has done. It's come suddenly. It's seemingly, it seems like it's come out of nowhere. Um, and it's sweeping over us. And again, the disciples 
uh, were panicking. They became anxious. Peter, as he's navigating the boat, they go down to Jesus and uh, Jesus is sound asleep. Jesus is not worried at all. And they're crying out to him, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up. He looked, he, he rebuked the winds and the waves and it became completely, here's our word, calm. It became calm. See, there are times in our lives where God will never protect you from what he wants to perfect you through. Uh, there are storms and crises that comes in our lives where God is trying to perfect some things in us and we have to understand uh, and allow God to do the perfecting in us because we, we have been a country that, that have forgotten about God. Um, and now it's time, God, he's perfecting some things in us. Now we need to return back uh, to prayer. We need to, to return back to our first love. Um, and so we have to understand that, that here's the thing. Jesus told them to go to the other side and then a storm arose. In other words, they obeyed and a storm came anyway. What does that say? Obedience does not exempt us from going through storms. Obedience to the Word of God does not exempt us from going, uh, experiencing a crisis in our lives, but it helps us to have peace in times of storms. It helps us to have peace in times of crisis when we're having difficult moments in uh, uh, dreary days. Um, so, so also number two, the reason Jesus was asleep. Why? Because he wanted them to realize that they had peace before he had to speak peace. God, I hope you call that. He wanted the people of God to realize that they, you have peace before you speak peace. You have to know uh, what you have on the inside uh, so that it can speak to your outside. Jesus is on board our ships. And so he wakes up, he speaks to the storm. He says, peace be still. But he didn't speak that. They didn't know that about him until the storm came. In other words, sometimes you don't know what you have until a crisis happens in your life. You don't know what you possess until moments of storms. You don't know what's in you. You don't even know the, your character or other people. You can judge people, uh, judge the character of people in a storm. You know what you really have when you are in a storm. Uh, Peter was doing well, uh, the disciples were doing well navigating the ship, navigating the boat until the storm came. And just like many of us, uh, we were doing well as pastors until this crisis came. We, we were doing well as husbands until a storm broke out. We were doing well as wives until uh, 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 bad, uh, negative, trying situations. Uh, a marriage was going well until the finances dried up. Uh, we were doing we were doing well um, until sickness struck our bodies or struck the bodies of someone we loved. And, and when things were going fine until a storm happened, let me can I ask you a question? Can you handle life when things are going well and when things are not going well? Can you? navigate the ship when the weather conditions of your life all of a sudden change? Can you still do well when I'm shipwrecked? Can we still manage when I'm barely making it on broken pieces of my life? Can you still love me when I lose my job? Can, can you still uh, love me when I'm, my body is stricken, when my, my mind begins to go uh, left and right? Can you still love me when the thunder is rolling in our lives and, and the lightning is flashing and uh, it's not what we would desire? Can, can I ask you this question? Can you praise God uh, uh, when you're having difficult moments? When winds are howling and blowing your stuff, 